Hey, wake up. We're rope dropping Disney World. Good morning, Mayhem fam, and welcome to our kickoff of a new series, Rope Dropping the Theme Parks. I've done a whole series where I go to the parks in the last few hours of the park day, but what happens in the mornings? Well, you got to get up bright and early and get to the parks before the sun comes up. But is it worth it? Is it worth it to wake up in the five or six o'clock hour on your vacation? That's what we're going to find out. Rope dropping is a theme park tradition as old as time. Goes back to when there would literally be a rope to hold the guests that they would drop. And then you would walk patiently and kindly to your first attraction. It's not what would happen. But rope dropping is still what people call it today when you get to the park before the park opens to try and knock out some of those heavy hitters and beat some of the crowds. We are kicking off the series today at my favorite Walt Disney World theme park, Disney's Animal Kingdom. So let's run the tape back and show you what happened before the sun came out this morning. Captain Slog, 7 11 a.m. Disney's Animal Kingdom opens for resort guests, which I am in 19 minutes. Is there time for coffee? Or do I need to go find that flight of passage line? Captain's log update, 714. I have forgone coffee for science. The science of rope dropping. That's how serious this is, friends. Hope you didn't think we we're gonna have fun in this video because it's serious business. Captain's log, 716. I can hear some kind of announcement happening at the front of the turnstiles. I believe they are about to start letting guests in. Once inside the park, they're gonna send the Disney World Resort guests to one way and the non-Disney World Resort guests to the other way. Disney World Resort guests and guests of select other resorts, like some of the ones on Hotel Plaza Boulevard at Disney Springs and the Swan and Dolphin, Shades of Green, get into the Disney know. World parks 30 minutes early every day, all four theme parks. So it's a great park at staying at one of the Walt Disney World hotels because within that 30 minutes, you can usually knock out a couple of smaller attractions or one e-ticket attraction, thus not having to purchase a fancy ride perhaps or making your day a little bit easier sans Genie Plus for a few attractions. I am a Walt Disney World Resort guest today. We're staying at Port Orleans tonight for a different video, hence why I started this rope drive series today. A couple of things to keep in mind when you are coming into the parks for rope drop. Number one, look at all the turnstiles. Oftentimes, especially with the design here at Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, the way the turnstiles are laid out, you can only get to some of them, but then it opens up. You can go to a shorter line. Obviously, don't cut anyone, but you can move to a shorter line. Number two, the park will be listed as opening a half an hour before the official park opens opening, get there a half an hour before that. Make sure you give yourself time to park or arrive on the transportation, get through security. I ended up here, as you heard, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes before the park opened, and I'm still getting in pretty quickly, but give yourself the goal of being there a half an hour beforehand, which means if you're taking Disney World transportation, make sure you talk to the cast members at your resort as to what time the first vehicle is leaving. Normally, it's an hour before the park opens to resort guests. I would aim to be out there pretty early and get on that first one or one of the first vehicles if you can. And number three, the most important rule of rope dropping, patient pants. There's a lot of people trying to get through these turnstiles at one time. The cast members are doing their best to get everybody in. There are gonna be people whose tickets don't work. They're gonna, Disney calls it blue laning because they're gonna get a blue light instead of a green light at the turnstiles. The cast members are gonna take care of it. Wear those patient pants. They're gonna get everybody in as quickly as possible. Oh, and don't run. We're not running. We're not running to the attraction we want to ride. You can walk briskly, but we're not running. The cast members are going to tell you not to run. It's a safety hazard. This is not TVs at Walmart on Black Friday. We're going to walk briskly. All right, we are in, baby. Early entry for resort guests is over to the left. Non-resort guests go to the right. You are going to have to prove that you are a Disney World resort guest using the My Disney Experience app. You should have your hotel stay linked to your card or your magic band or your phone. Don't pretend you're a resort guest when you're not because they'll figure it out. All right, we are in. We are walking briskly. Pro tip, always have your My Disney Experience open with your resort reservation or have a screenshot of it in case your ticket or your magic band or whatever won't scan. I have everything on my phone. It wasn't scanning, but she was like, just show me your app, which I already had it pulled open. So that's a little pro tip as well. One person per party is going to have to scan something. Like pretty much everyone rope dropping Animal Kingdom right now, we're headed to Avatar Flight of Passage in Pandora. Why? 
because it's the most popular ride here. It is the fancy ride, meaning it's an additional cost to skip the line. So it's a good one to try and rope drop because even though we may end up waiting 30 or 45 minutes, it's usually well over an hour, if not 90 minutes or 120 minutes during the vast majority of the day. So it's a great choice for your first rope drop situation. And uh, if all goes according to my plan, we're gonna actually really kind of rope drop two attractions. Ooh, mysterious. Fly to passage to the right, Navi River Journey to the left, the sweet cast member says. This is always a good reminder to be nice and listen to the cast members, they're directing you the way you need to go. And let's see how far back this queue goes. There have been many times where I've done this in my life and it goes all the way to Africa and the Festival of the Lion King building, but we'll see. What I am seeing right now though, is it's consistently moving, which is a great thing. That either means they let the queue in and they're letting everybody fill the main part of the queue, or it means they actually started operating the ride before the official opening time for early park entry, which is another reason you wanna get here early because they often will unadvertisingly actually open it like 15 minutes early. I'm sure you can't hear me over the loudest fictional bugs in the universe, but great news. It looks like we're only going to the very tippy end of Pandora and turning around not any further this early. All right, now that I'm like officially in the queue, like I'm not in the official queue, but I'm clearly in the queue. You know what I mean? I'm gonna start a timer. It is 731 which means early entry officially began one minute ago. I want to look at the tip board and see what flight of passage is even listed at because when attractions open, they just put a wait time up and it may not necessarily be that right then, but they know it's going to hit that wait time very, very soon. They put up 30 minutes for flight of passage, which even if it hits that, that's awesome. Now at this park, not every attraction opens when early park entry does. Flight of Passage does, Navi River Journey does, as well as Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain TM, Dinosaur, It's Tough to Be a Bug, and Triceratops Spin. So significantly that leaves out Cali River Rapids, which is actually closed for refurbishment right now, but it doesn't open early anyway. And Kilimanjaro Safaris does not open until a little bit after the park officially opens. Theoretically, if you were okay with paying for the fancy ride for Flight of Passage, you could knock out some of the popular Genie Plus attractions in this park in the early park entry. Navi River Journey would actually be the best one to do since it's usually got the longest lines of those other attractions. You could also try and knock out both Everest and Dinosaur in this 30 minutes, which I think as long as you can move quickly between the two could easily be done. But no, those two don't usually get near as long of a line as the stuff here in Pandora. Captain's update. Good morning. It's been about eight minutes and I'm officially in the queue now. Now I will say that wait time, the 30 minutes I saw on the app, that starts from the back of the actual line, not here once you're in the queue. So that means it's gonna be only about 20 more minutes until I get in the ride, which well, in the pre-show, which I will be impressed because this is a long queue. Avatar Flight of Passage, like I said, easily the most popular attraction in this park. That's why everybody's up and at them and headed straight here. It's a flight simulator that's gonna put you on the back of a banshee as seen in the movie Avatar. Whoa, look how cool these pods are. They're kind of glowy. Anyway, you are gonna fly over the Valley of Moara on your banshee. And as not Sigourney Weaver says, experience some of the most beautiful and thrilling things you can encounter on Pandora. And what's really interesting about this attraction is when you think about it, it's a simulator within a simulator because it's quite literally a simulator, but in the story, it's also a simulator because you're becoming an avatar. You're linking to a body that's just flailing lifelessly on the back of a banshee. And then once you connect, it's gonna whoop, and uh, like one of those car sales, wacky whaley inflatable tube men, and then you can go on your adventure. You don't see that whole first part, but it's fun to think about. This one has a 44 inch height requirement. It's also in 3D. It also has one of the most unique ride vehicles in Walt Disney World. And it's not gonna be comfortable for everybody because of the weird kind of like motorcycle style seat and the way that you need to lean forward. So I highly, highly, highly recommend using the test seat at the entrance of the attraction before you get in this queue because it'd be a real bummer to wait for 30 minutes or worse, an hour plus, only to find out it's not gonna work out for you. If you wanna sit in the test seat and you're trying to rope drop, my recommendation would be 
for whoever needs to sit in the test seat to go straight to the test seat if you're able to. And then other people in your party go in the line and then try and rejoin your party before they actually get into the main part of the queue. Obviously, that can be really annoying when people do it when like one person's in the line and then like 15 people come join them. But I think if you are one person that goes to check out the test seat whilst the rest of your family goes to find the end of the queue like I was this morning, that should be all right. <laughs> Captain's log, 7.44 a.m. We have made it into the inside part of the queue. It has been 13 minutes and 23, 24, 25, 26 seconds since I joined the Flight of Passage queue. And we are, as they say, moving and grooving. This queue really is amazingly beautiful. And the only downfall to moving this quickly is you can't really appreciate it. <laughs> Look at all these bioluminescent moss prints and the overgrown RDA stuff. Oh, also, there's mid queue bathrooms. Probably don't need them if you're moving and grooving. Make sure you go beforehand. But if the line's really long, you can use those. Oh, this queue is so good. It's beautiful. You do skip all of this if you go through the lightning lane. You skip the lab too, which we're about to go into. Now I'm not saying this queue is worth waiting an hour or two or more. It was like five, six, seven hours during Christmas. I'm definitely not saying that, but it is a really pretty queue. So if you want to rope drop, the, another perk is that you get to see this. Hello, Hank, good morning. That's Hank in the tank. He's really cool. Captain's log, 7.55 a.m., 24 minutes after getting in the queue, and I'm headed into the pre-show, which is where Disney stops the clock, and thus, where I will stop the clock. A Navi guide will lead you out. You'll experience the breathtaking beauty of Pandora, as the Navi say during this important rite of passage, Sivak Hope, rise to the challenge. a beautiful attraction it always makes my eye water because the wind and then often i think once the floodgates are open i just have a few tears particularly in the bioluminescent cave scene with the wisps it's it truly is beautiful and i very often say this is not my favorite attraction it's not even my favorite attraction at this park i much prefer the physical moving aspect of something like expedition everest or dinosaur but you can't deny that this is an unbelievable attraction you also can't deny that the fact that we were on and off of it in 30-ish minutes is amazing. It's 8.10 right now. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, the park officially opened to all guests at 8 o'clock, but earlier I hinted towards rope dropping twice, and that's because one of my all-time favorite rides doesn't actually open until 8.15, so we're going to head there now and hope to be on one of the first vehicles there. Let's check the wait time on Flight of Passage as we're getting off, about 15 minutes after the park opens to everyone. Let's see the other wait times too, as we head to Africa on this very nice, serene path that not a lot of people travel on. It is like Mon Jovi though, so watch your step. Hopefully some of you get that joke. Anyway, uh, Flight of Passage getting off of the attraction is a 65 minute wait, dinosaur five minutes. Unfortunately, Everest is Close for technical difficulties. Da, da, da. Uh, Mickey and Minnie have started meeting. They have a 15 minute wait. Navi River Journey, 30 minutes. So if Navi River Journey is on your list, it would be a good use of time to pop over there while it's only 30 minutes if you're not purchasing Genie Plus because that one 
will likely hit 60 minutes and sit there for most of the day. And I don't think that attraction's worth a 60 minute wait, but 30 minutes is probably fine. Probably the max I'd stand and stand by. That said, getting over to Kilimanjaro Safaris and being on one of the first safari trucks was far more important to me than the Shaman of Song. And I'm really sorry, but gotta be honest here. How special is it to walk through a literally empty Africa right now? I'm sure that won't be the case once we round the corner, but this is so cool. This gives me a lot of nostalgia from when I was a kid because my mom and I used to always make the earliest Tusker house, which is right here, the character dining reservation that we could get into the park really early, take pictures in front of the tree, have our early Tusker house breakfast. And then by the time we were done, safaris would have just opened and we'd go do an early safari just like you and I are doing right now. So I love this. I love this park. And for the record, I do stand by that plan, especially if you don't care about flight of passage or you're gonna purchase the lightning lane for flight of passage, make the earliest Tusker house reservation that you can, get into the park early, luxuriously walk through the park in the beginning instead of rushing to Pandora. Like enjoy looking at the tree, take some uncrowded pictures, then head to Tusker house, kick off your day with a delicious meal with Mickey and the gang and then head right to safaris. Made it into the Kilimanjaro safaris queue. It has a posted 20 minute wait, so I started a clock to see if that's true. Now, it might actually be 20 minutes because while we got here very shortly after it opened, there are lots of guests that didn't go to Flight of Passage first, whether they were non-resort guests and came straight here or they chose to do something else and come over here. So it could actually be 20 minutes. Regardless, this is one of my favorite attractions to do early in the day because the earlier you go, the more active the animals are. It's not as hot. They're waking up. They're having a lovely day. And you're more likely to get some really good animal action if you go on an early safari versus a afternoon safari. And Kilimanjaro Safaris is, of course, the actual safari and Animal Kingdom, the flagship attraction of this park, where you're going to see real lions, elephants, giraffes, rhinos, hippos, crocodiles, birds, zebras, all kinds of different creatures could be out there. And again, the earlier you go, the more likely you're going to see some of those heavy hitters, especially the lions. I am the next group to board. It has been 14 minutes. We love that. It's been a minute since I've been on a safari. I'm very excited right now. I love this attraction so much and I can't wait to see who's awake. Also pro tip, ask nicely if you could be in the back row. It's the best row because you can turn around and look at the other animals. It does get a little bumpier back here, um, but I, I always politely ask. If they can't make it happen, they can't make it happen, but it is my preferred vehicle seat. Blue tongue like a giraffe, except they don't have that long neck and those long legs. In Africa, they stand around five feet tall. Because these are all females on the right. I can tell because they don't have any horns. Dark brown, almost black in color. That really goes with a lot. Went to 3,500 pounds. <laughs> Neither zebra are actually a brown and white animal. Giraffes also sleep with their eyes open. Says giraffe can be sleepwalking. Hello, oh, beautiful. No, no, you're awake. Oh, hi. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Four whole days without drinking water and then drinking water. This is an African elephant, because we're in Africa. But also if you look at their ears, you, it's a little hard to see, but you may notice their ears are actually in the same exact shape as the African continent. That's only so we have a plan points of greater flamingo here on our left-hand side. Teeth, it makes it very hard for them to digest and break down food. So, as a result, ostrich will around the distance of a football field, and you have to take a very long rest afterwards. We have a lot of animals coming up here soon. So, we have these lions. That'll... So, I'm going to give mom here just a little bit of distance here. These are white rhino. Uh, they weigh up and they really see us from that distance. Now, lions. Now, if you think that these goats are cute and you want to get a closer look for yourself. What an unbelievably good safari that was oh my gosh for starters the giraffe and the rhino were so close they walked right past the truck on my side it was amazing also got great shots of the lions the cheetah were some of the most active i've ever seen them Ooh, blustery bunch of rhino baby zebra oh it was a delight and my safari driver max taught me some new animal fun facts which is almost as good as seeing a lion he taught me that Hippos and dolphins are related, which is why hippos can stay underwater for so long, because they have the same type of breathing system as dolphins. Shocking. Elephants can store a gallon of water in their trunk. And zebra's kicks are so strong that they could crack a bowling ball in half. 
I always knew that it could break a lion's jaw. I'd heard that comparison, but like thinking about a bowling ball, cracking it in half with a little whoosh of their feet. Wow. Now at this point in the day, it's not really rope drop anymore. It's nine o'clock. The park's been open for an hour for everyone, an hour and a half for resort guests. So it's not really considered rope drop anymore. So the initial boost of getting here early is kind of over once the park's been open for an hour. That said, it's a weekday and it's Animal Kingdom in January. So it's not super busy here anyway. So Navi River Journey still has only a 30 minute wait. Dinosaur still has a five minute wait. Everest has a 15 minute wait, but Flight of Passage has a 70 minute wait. So we still definitely made the right decision by heading there first. So at this point, if you were trying to maximize your Animal Kingdom day, I would suggest going back to do Navi River Journey or heading over to do Everest or Dinosaur while those wait times stay low. Peak wait times in the park usually start hitting it around like two hours hours or so after the parks would open. So 10 ish for this park, perhaps a little bit earlier for the other parks because they're usually more crowded and also open later. So less people get up this early. So if you really want to maximize your animal kingdom day, you want to try and get as much as you can done in those first two hours. And uh, we are lucky that Navi River Journey doesn't have too long of a line still. Took a little bit of a gamble heading over to Safaris because Safaris is more important to me than Navi River Journey, but concerning it still only has a 30 minute wait, we're jumping in line there. Navi River Journey is much more likely than Everest or Dinosaur to get a longer line. So for me, if you can prioritize those three in the morning time, one, they're pretty close to each other, Flight of Passage, Navi River Journey, and Kilimanjaro Safaris, and two, those are the rides that most likely will have the longest lines in this park, especially Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey. Navi River Journey is a slow moving boat ride, no higher requirement through the bioluminescent forest of Pandora. It's kind of Pandora's equivalent of an animal trail that you'd find in Africa or Asia. And since they can't put you on an animal trail with the actual animals like they can there, they put you in a boat and, and scoot you past these magical mythical creatures. My personal favorite, Pandora horse, but I also like Pandora jaguar, and I get a kick out of Pandora frog. Day one now. minutes we will take it wow that's the three rides that get the longest line in this park all by 9 33. now at this point those wait times are starting to creep up just a little bit flight of passage is still 70 dinosaur still five but everest has jumped to 30. let's see kilimanjaro safaris is 25 Mickey and Minnie's 30 and Navi River Journey is 45 as I get off of it. So you can see those wait times starting to creep up. Again, if you really wanted to continue maximizing the morning time, I would head over and probably do Dinosaur, knowing that Everest at some point will likely drop a little bit lower. But either way, 30 minutes isn't super long for Everest either. We, however, are going to get ourselves a little treat because they have a newish breakfast item at Pongu Pongu that I have not enjoyed yet because I'm a creature of the night and am never here early enough for breakfast. Pongu Pongu means party party in Navi. It's the little snack stand here in Pandora. And during the lunch dinner time, so after 10.30, this is where you can get that giant pretzel. You can get the famous Night Blossom or Rum Blossom, the frozen beverages. But at breakfast, they have a special treat. Breakfast treats acquired, including the iconic Night Blossom slush. And now I am scurrying over to a nice little place to luxuriate and enjoy them. And I've got my breakfast sandwich all warm in my bag and my coffee and my slush. And we're gonna go finish out this lovely morning.
Trekked my breakfast goodies to my favorite spot in Walt Disney World, this beautiful and quiet path behind the Tree of Life. And now we are going to have ourselves a little trash can table time. It's trash can table time. Siva Co. I just love it back here so much. There's very rarely people, or if there are people, they're just walking on through. I love to get my coffee here. The entrance to this trail is right across from Creature Comforts, which is the Starbucks here, which is so convenient. That's normally what I do when I'm in this park in the morning uh, or any time of day is grab a coffee and come back here. But today we're trying this special treat from Pandora. This is just Joffrey's coffee, which we love. This is the famous Night Blossom, which as you can see is a little melted now, but it's a non-alcoholic slushy signature to Pandora. It's layers of apple and desert pear limeade with some boba balls on top. There is a rum blossom with rum on it, um, but it sounds refreshing and delicious. I actually really like that slushy. And then here is what I really went to Pongu Pongu for. This is called Marshall's Favorite Stuffed Pancake Sandwich with sausage, guava jelly, egg, and cheese. And I have questions. My first question was actually, who is Marshall? And why does he have a sandwich named after him? But the cast member told me Marshall is the uh, human that built Pongu Pongu within the story of Pandora. So in the world of Pandora, bad humans were there with the RDA, which is what the movie's about. But then good humans came in and uh, established their like conservation efforts with Ace. Um, and that is what Marshall's a part of. Anyway, so this breakfast sandwich, as you can see, as I ripped it open, has fluffy pancake exterior, some sausage, some guava jelly, cheese and egg. We just gotta try it. It smells kind of like a McGriddle because the pancake exterior. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. You sick genius. Mm, that thing is fantastic. I wasn't sure I was going to feel about it because I don't love guava, but it is so good. It's like what's good about a McGriddle, which is the sweet and savory combination, but with the unique Animal Kingdom twist. The pancake exterior is obviously a little bit heartier than an actual pancake, so it can hold the sandwich. And it doesn't have maple on it, but it does have a little natural sweetness because it's a pancake. And then you've also got the little bit of natural tart fruit sweetness from the guava, but it's not overwhelming at all, which is perfectly balancing this cheesy egg and the sausage, which actually has a little bit of good sausage, breakfast sausage heat to it. Not super hot at all, but I just mean like, you know, you get really bland breakfast sausages and then you get like a classic good, like a Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. This tastes more like a Jimmy Dean. It is truly such a good blend of savory with a little bit of sweet. Definitely different than any other quick service breakfast I've ever had at Disney World. That is phenomenal, no notes. Now, the slushy. I've obviously had these before. I'm slurping it down to wash down my breakfast. I often enjoy a slushy in the parks because it is so hot and humid. A slushy sometimes just tastes great. It's pretty humid today as well, even though it's overcast. I love the limeade, made a little bit of tart as opposed to just being a sweet slushy. This is very, very good. Highly recommend, way different than just getting a regular like Goofy's Glacier somewhere. And if you want a little kick, add that rum. I personally in Pandora, I'm going to drink the custom beer, but I love a Night Blossom if I don't want to have an alcoholic beverage. And then this is, of course, just brewed Jeffrey's Coffee, which they didn't always sell at Pongu Pongu. At one point, Marshall didn't sell coffee, which I didn't appreciate. Um, and now I appreciate that he added both Joffrey's Coffee and his delicious sandwich. Wow, Marshall, I'm thoroughly impressed. And I think that is the perfect way to end this first in the rope drop series. So what do we learn here at Disney's Animal Kingdom when it comes to rope drop? If you are a resort guest, getting here early and going to Flight of Passage is absolutely the way to go. You can save yourself the money from having to buy a fancy ride if you're already going to come into the park early. I do think this is the park you need Genie Plus the least. So if you don't want to get here at Rope Drop, my recommendation is just to buy the fancy ride for Flight of Passage. And then you probably don't need Lightning Lane anywhere else in the park, especially if you come later in the day. I did a whole video on why you should come to Animal Kingdom in the afternoon, if that pleases you. Additionally, if you get here early, and by early, I mean earlier than early park entry and through Flight of Passage in time, next step for me is to head to Kilimanjaro Safaris. Yes, I know Navi River Journey is right there, so you could do that first, but we had such a good safari. And remember, generally speaking, the earlier go to safari, the better safari you're going to have. Again, remember the first two hours that the park are open are kind of your sweet spot for those low lines. So we were able to do Flight of Passage, Kilimanjaro Safaris, and Navi River Journey all within that time frame, which are the three longest lines in the park. Didn't wait more than 24 minutes for any of them, which is amazing. And because this is the most luxuriating park at this point, now you could go on to do things that don't normally get as long of lines, like Dinosaur, Expedition Everest, enjoy the shows, luxuriate, walk around, see the animal trails, get some good food. 
So rope dropping is a really good way to handle this park because you can get a lot of it done early and then you can hop over somewhere else as well. Plus, don't forget, if you buy Genie Plus for the next park you're going to, you could be stacking lightning lanes this whole time. Check the 2024 Genie Guide for a little bit of help on how to do that if you need it. And lastly, but possibly the most important thing we learned today, Marshall Lamb, an angel in the kitchen, and we thank him for his breakfast sandwich. Give that a whirl if you come early to Animal Kingdom. Reward yourself, treat yourself for getting out of bed so early on vacation with little pancake Sam. And that is a wrap on this first episode of the Rope Drop series. Let me know which park you want to see next. And in the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with the Man Fam and Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been magical. Goodbye.